Let's get started with Mark Spears. Mark Spears? Jeez. <laughs> hey, what's up, Coach? Wow. How you doing? I got, uh, well, hope all's well with you. Nice win. Congrats. <laughs> I, Thank you. I, I actually got an off-the-beaten-path question for you. I want to ask you about uh, the acquisition of George Hill, what he's meant for you guys. Yeah. And also, from somebody that was in the bubble and, and seeing what he did there, what kind of person does he is he to you off the court? Yeah, he's, he's special both ways, uh, Mark. Uh, He's been phenomenal. Obviously, he played well today, and he's been playing well. But uh, And I talked about it before the game. Just his voice, um, his willingness to share and speak up. Uh, you know, in shoot-arounds, he's, like, grabbing guys' shoulders and changing their angles on picks. Um, he's just been great, you know. Um, it's funny. Uh, you know, Dan and a couple of our other coaches had him and said he was really quiet. Uh, and he's been great with us. He feels comfortable enough to share and talk. Um, and then, you know, just from what he did last year, um, I think that brought some cachet with him as well. Um, it's been great having conversations with the team uh, on social things. Um, with George, with you, it's kind of nice, you know. Um, he, he likes to share. We have a, a team that actually likes to talk about issues, you know, and not just social issues, just in general, you know, the world. And so it's been pretty cool. Thanks, Doc. Thanks. John Clark. Hey, Doc, uh, what did you think of uh, Ben Simmons' aggressiveness from the start, but this time kind of doing it on his own with his communication with Joel because of what they were doing with Joel? Yeah, yeah, they were giving us space, you know, and, and that's one of the things, like, when they don't give space, that means Ben's going to drive and kick off. He'll, he'll, he'll create points by passing. When they do give space, then Ben drives to score. And tonight, they kind of changed what they were doing on Joel, uh, which gave Ben more room. Um, they were also spraying back out to our shooters, which gave Ben more room. And, and uh, he, he was great. He took advantage of it. Hey, uh, after game one, you had a lot of coaching points. Uh, you got anything after tonight? Yeah, I'm sure I will. You know, I, I can guarantee you that. I didn't, you know... It's funny, in the first, at halftime, we were up. I wasn't happy, uh, you know, with some of the things we were doing defensively. Uh, then I thought at the end of the third, we threw the ball away a bunch uh, to keep them in it. But overall, they played with great spirit. They really did. I love how they're sharing the ball, and I love our pace. Like, we have to keep playing at that pace. Thank you. Thanks. Keith Pompey. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, what really stood out to you? Because it seemed to me – the spirit was there, that they were sharing the ball. Um, I, I know you said you probably didn't like the, the second quarter, but you guys shot 68% in, in that second quarter. Yeah, it's funny. I rarely look at the offensive numbers. Uh, it's funny. I'm, I go straight to defense. I, I really do. Um, you know, the offense was great just because of the spacing that they, they gave each other. Uh, the ball didn't stick, Keith. Like, it was from decision to decision decisiveness, quick decision. That's, I mean, we say it a billion times every practice. Move it, quick decision, be decisive. I thought our guys did a great job of sharing a ball. And then at halftime, we talked about, like, if we, if we want to really get up, if we get multiple stops, then we can really run. And I thought the defense in that third quarter changed it. I mean, we started getting stops and running, and then it was all over. In, in regards to Ben, you know, the last couple of days you've been asked a lot of questions about him. You know, you talked about the treasure he is. I mean, here's a guy that was criticized yesterday and the day before that. And for him to come out, and I know you don't care about stuff like that, right? But for him to come out and have that performance, that says a lot about him. Yeah, it does. But we didn't, like, listen, If we, we scored 125 points the, the first game, I think. So it's all about us scoring points. And whichever way we do it, I'm good with that, you know. Um, if we had scored 130 and Ben had the same numbers as the first game, that would have mean he was great in doing something else. That's what I mean. His value to us is almost, you can't measure it. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Rich Hoffman. 
Hey, Doc, uh, Tyrese Maxey got some second-half minutes for you guys. You, you did play 11. Um, was that a um, reaction to Seth's injury, and do you think with his strong play he might play more in the coming game? Uh, it wasn't a reaction to Seth at all. Uh, we had made that decision. I actually told him in halftime he'd be playing in the second half. So uh, we'll see. You know, I don't comment about players' minutes and all that stuff, but uh, he earned it. He was fantastic. His speed was a difference maker. Raphael Haynes. Hey, Coach Raphael from the three point conversion. Coach, you all held Washington to two, was two for um, 22 from the three point line. Was it an emphasis to keep them from the three point line or stop them from the three point line? Yeah, but they missed some too. You know, I, we, I'd love to take all that credit, but they did miss some shots that we'll go over that I thought were makeable shots. But overall, I thought we were flying around. We ran them off the three a lot. Uh, I thought we stopped the drive for one stretch. And when you stop the drive, you can get back out to the three. So I thought that was key. That's something we talked about for two days. Paul Hunter. Hey, Doc. I apologize that this is already uh, talked about. But um, Matisse and Tyrese both together, um, it just seems like you already touched on you know Tyrese's speed. But it seems like they're kind of like, energy and like the kind of youthfulness they kind of provide seems like it definitely gives you guys a boost um, when they're playing together. Is that something you'd like to see more of just them two, you know, playing together and developing their chemistry a little bit? Yeah, it's been good. You know, um, you know, we had Tyrese or, or Matisse setting picks. We had him rolling, running the floor. Um, you know, he, he had the one back cut for a layup that, that uh, Tyrese gave to him. So it's good, you know, but they play together. I tell you every day, that group gets together at the practices and goes through every set, you know, and uh, they've been great so far. So we just got to keep it going. Thanks, Last question, Mike Sielski. Hi, Doc. Uh, <clears throat> to follow up on that and a Matisse question, given, I mean, he had four steals and five blocks in just 20 minutes tonight. Can, can you deploy a player like him? from a defensive standpoint, the way you might from a guy off the bench, from an offensive standpoint, can, you know, do you think of him that way, or do you just put him in when you need him and take for granted? Yeah, I guess you can say he's our defensive Lou Williams. You know, like Lou Williams I had, and, and I had Jamal Crawford, both, uh, offensively, where you threw him in and you told them if they passed the ball once, you were going to take him out. <laughs> because that's, their job was to score. Uh, Matisse's job is to get stops when he comes in. So I haven't, I've not had a lot of guys. Tony Allen, I guess, way back was very similar because he was coming off the bench for us. Uh, offensively, there's very few guys like that in the league. And the guys who they are are usually the sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson, you know, guys like